What is an exchange traded fund? Well, it's very simple. ETFs are just like index mutual funds in that they contain pools of securities that track a specific market index. And so, you know, they are essentially index funds, index mutual funds. But one of the real advantages is that they trade like a stock. They can be bought or sold anytime throughout the day. Um, you've probably heard of some of the ETFs, like you, you see the, on commercials, there's a spider that crawls across and stands on a scale, and the scale goes to 500. That's the S&P 500 spider, which is the very first ETF um, that was introduced. And these ETFs, they track a market index. And so here you see in the chart, the top part is the actual index, the S&P 400 mid-cap index, and the bottom chart is the ETF that tracks that index. And you see the correlation is very, very close. Um, Any time that it starts to get off a little bit, you know, one goes up while the other goes down, arbitragers usually come in and take advantage of that. And so that helps keep the correlation close. And also the ETFs are really open-end funds, and so they can create or redeem shares as well to make sure that the ETFs track closely. And so an ETF, this is kind of how it's, I believe, more predictable than stocks, but certainly safer, is um, when you invest in an ETF, you gain well-diversified exposure to one area of the market. And since you're holding a basket of stocks rather than just an individual stock, one bad performer really has a minimal effect on the price of the ETF. So you're holding, when you buy one ETF, you might be holding one security. You're really holding a basket of stocks. And obviously some ETFs are more diversified than others. Uh, you know, there's a sector ETF that's not going to be that diversified. It might hold just banks. Whereas you can buy the Russell 2000, which holds 2,000 small company stocks. One's more diversified than others. But in each case, they hold a basket of stocks. And so with ETFs, you don't have to worry that the stock that you own is going to appear on that dreaded biggest losers of the day. Um, because of, you know how stocks work, anytime they come out and announce any bit of bad news, there's a 20% down gap. That's kind of the nature of the game. And so I'm just giving an example here. Let's say you liked energy stocks on February 15, 2007. And so as a stock investor, you decided to buy Baker Hughes. Well, it turns out that they missed the earnings guidance, dropped 10% in one day, whereas the energy ETF, the XLE, it was only down fractionally for that day. And so you can see that um, you don't have to worry about that news that affects just one particular stock. Because it holds a basket of stocks, um, it's not susceptible to the, that downward gap that stocks are susceptible to. Expenses. Um, because most ETFs are index funds, their expenses are very low. You're not paying for an analyst to evaluate stocks. They're just making sure that ETF tracks the market index. And so the ETFs, actually, if you compare them to mutual funds, the ETFs um, have lower expenses than similar mutual funds. Um, for instance, you know, Vanguard has always been considered to be the pioneer in low-cost mutual funds, very cheap to own the S&P 500 through their index fund. Um, the Spider has an expense ratio of 0.12%, so you can follow the S&P 500 that way for extremely cheap. And the QQQ, Q, which the Qs, tracks the NASDAQ 100, expense ratio of 0.18%. And so obviously very cheap. You obviously do, since they trade like a stock, pay a commission anytime you buy or sell the ETFs. And that commission depends on your brokerage commission rate. 